no long-winded intro today, let's just get right into it. I wanted to do a quick follow-up on the previous episode on comparatives and superlatives because an anonymous viewer emailed in to remind me that diminutives are also a thing in both languages. Now, diminutives are not strictly related to comparatives and superlatives, but they're all kind of in the same ballpark. So I kind of wish I had thought to include a little section towards the end of the previous episode on diminutives. We could have had an episode on comparatives, superlatives, and diminutives. But uh, I didn't think of it. So, second best option, let's do a little mini episode right here and now to specifically discuss diminutives. Uh, so, no wasting time, let's jump right into it. What is a diminutive? A diminutive is a modifier that we can apply to a noun, not to an adjective as we were doing with comparatives and superlatives, but rather a modifier that we can apply to a noun. Okay, what does that modifier do? Well, it reduces or diminishes the perceived physical size of the person, place, or thing to which that noun refers. Or, uh, it can figuratively reduce or diminish the uh, perceived significance or importance of whatever the noun refers to. Okay, great. Uh, let's look at some examples. We're going to look at English, we're going to look a little bit at French, and we're going to look at German. Uh, let's start with English. Uh, English is a bit of a hodgepodge language. I've complained about this before. Uh, English had a lot of different influences uh, when it was first formed, uh, and it has mutated quite a bit over time. Uh, modern English would be pretty much unintelligible to someone who spoke Old English or even Middle English because it has changed so much and it continues to change. English has had a lot of different influences. Uh, we got a little bit of Latin, we got a little bit of Greek, we got a lot of German, we got a, we got a bunch of vocabulary overlap from French, uh, we got a little bit of Anglo, we got a little bit of Saxon, we got a little bit of everything, just throw it on in. This is a good thing because the resulting language is very rich and diverse, but it's also a bad thing because occasionally it feels like the language is more complex than it needs to be. And here's one example. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to form the diminutive in English. Uh, I'm not going to look at every single one, we're just going to look at some of the more common ones. So, for example, there's a suffix, and yes, uh, when you apply a diminutive to a noun, usually, not always, uh, but usually it's in the form of a suffix that goes at the end of that noun. Uh, there are exceptions, as we'll see. Uh, one such suffix in English is one that we get directly from French. It's E-T-T-E, -E, et. There are words in French like la maison. You can also say uh, la maisonette, literally the small house. Uh, la fille, the girl. Uh, la fillette, the little girl. Okay, uh, we have a few such words in English. Uh, for example, kitchenette is a small kitchen. Or uh, serviette is a table napkin. Serviette comes from the French verb servir, to serve, uh, in the context of like, at a restaurant you're serving a table. Or how about the word cigarette? literally a small version of a cigar. Note, sometimes there's a pronunciation change when we uh, apply a suffix like this. Uh, we don't say cigarette, we say cigarette. And if you look at a cigarette next to a cigar, it is quite literally a smaller version of the same idea. Uh, there's a related suffix in English, which is let, L-E-T. Uh, there's a bunch of words in English that end in let. For example, piglet, or gauntlet, or uh, booklet, or servlet, if you're into software development. These words all describe a smaller version of whatever the base word refers to. For example, a piglet is a small uh, pig that is not yet fully grown. Uh, a booklet is like a, it's like a book, but it's smaller. It doesn't have as many pages, and uh, it's not properly bound as a book is bound. Now, usually, the diminutive comes in the form of a suffix that goes at the end of a noun, but not always. Uh, there's at least one prefix that I can think of in English that goes at the start of a noun. We've got the prefix mini in English, which can be used in a bunch of different places. For example, uh, a mini computer or a mini cassette, uh, a mini skirt, ooh la la. Uh, you can have a mini van, a mini series. In the context of uh, video games, you can have a mini boss, not as strong as an end boss, sort of like halfway to an end boss. Or, or you've got the concept of a mini game that's a little game within a game. You can stick the prefix mini in front of almost any noun in English to form a diminutive version of that noun. Great. Uh, we have some less formal suffixes in English like uh, O. You can say kiddo instead of kid, or bucko, or daddy-o. Daddy-o is very old-fashioned. I haven't heard that one in a very long time. Uh, you can also append that one to someone's name to form a little nickname for them, like Steve-o is a more friendly way of saying Steve. Okay. Along the same lines, we've got the suffix y in English. Uh, you can say piggy instead of pig, or doggy instead of dog. Uh, you can also append that one to people's names, uh, Stevie instead of Steve, or Polly instead of Paul, or Jimmy instead of Jim, etc, etc. Uh, we also have the suffix ish in English. Ish is kind of an interesting one because it's not specifically about diminishing something, but rather about making something more vague. Uh, for example, if I describe an object as large-ish, what am I saying there? Well, I'm saying it's not particularly large, but it's also not small. It's sort of, it's kind of large. If I describe a person as brave-ish, what am I saying about that person? Well, I'm not 
necessarily calling them a coward, but I'm not particularly complimenting them on their bravery either. I'm saying that they're just sort of brave. They're mildly brave. Oh, hey, by the way, what color was that motorcycle you looked at last week? Well, it was grayish. What do you mean grayish? Well, it, it might have been silver, it might have been charcoal, it might have been dark gray, I don't really remember. It was some shade of gray, it was grayish. I'm being vague by adding that ish suffix. Uh, and sometimes in English, the diminutive is neither a prefix nor a suffix. It can be a separate word that uh, goes in front of the noun to be modified. Uh, a very commonly used one for this purpose in English is little. Little can be hostile or even insulting. Uh, for example, someone might say something like, uh, why don't you go do your little job? Or why don't you go solve your little problem if you can? Or why don't you go live your little life? In those examples, I'm not referring to the physical size of something, but rather figuratively I'm, I'm speaking to the importance or significance of those things. And specifically, more specifically, I'm being insulting, I'm being hostile and demeaning. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that I don't consider those things to be important. For example, why don't you go do your little job is very dismissive. Uh, I'm saying I don't consider your job to be very important. And by extension, I don't consider you to be very important because you're doing that little job. It's very mean, it's uh, very insulting. There's a variant of that one that involves swear words. Instead of saying, why don't you go do your little job, you can say something else. But I really want to keep this channel family friendly, so let's skip over the profanity and keep going. Uh, little doesn't have to be hostile or demeaning. It can be the exact opposite, uh, especially in reference to children. For example, if you have a young boy, you could refer to him as a little slugger. And if you want to be extra cutesy-poo, you can drop the T's out of the word little to form the non-word lil. Lil slugger. What's a lil slugger? Well, I believe originally this was a baseball reference. Slugger in this context refers to knocking the baseball right out of the park, hitting a home run. Uh, and what we're saying is, well, the boy's too young to do that right now, but when he grows up, he has the potential to become a slugger. He has the potential to become a professional baseball player if he wants to. And it's not meant to insult or degrade the kid at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm speaking to the potential that this boy has to, to grow up and become a slugger. Right now, we call him Little Slugger. Great. Uh, the female equivalence of that might be something like Little Angel or Little Princess or uh, Little Miss. We have to be careful with some of those because they can come across as condescending or even insulting if used uh, in the wrong context. The last one, for example, Little Miss, can very easily be uh, misread as sarcastic. And in fact, you can use that one sarcastically. You can say things like, uh, oh, here comes Little Miss Sunshine. If I say that sarcastically about someone, I'm saying that uh, I don't consider this person to be very cheerful. In fact, quite the opposite, she's very uh, gloomy and depressing, so I refer to her sarcastically as Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, this one can come across as sarcastic, even if you don't intend it to come across as sarcastic. If you refer to someone as Little Miss, uh, you can, uh, it can come across as condescending or dismissive or even insulting. So we have to be careful with that one. And while we're on that subject, let's talk about titles. Uh, this is a little old-fashioned, but in English, if you're not on a first-name basis with someone, if it's a man, you'd refer to him as Mr. Unless he has a doctoral degree, in which case it's doctor, or uh, a, a knighthood, or a lordship, or whatever. He might be sir, he might be lord. But if he's just a regular guy, you refer to him as Mr. The female equivalent is Mrs. if you're speaking to an older lady, a, a married lady. There are diminutive versions of both of these. This is a little old-fashioned. If you're speaking to a younger lady, an unmarried lady, you refer to her in English as Miss. But again, we have to be careful with this, and this is kind of being phased out of the language because it can come across as condescending or insulting. Especially if you put the word little in front of it. Uh, there is a male equivalent of this, at least in British English. I don't think I've ever heard this in North American English. But in British English, you can refer to a young man as master instead of mister, and very often the word young will be placed in front of it. So for example, ah, young master Bruce, how are you today? Young master refers to uh, a young man or a boy. Now, these are related to titles in French. Let's briefly talk about the French language. Uh, in French, you have the term uh, Madame. Madame literally means my lady, Madame. In fact, the English expression Milady uh, is a direct, literal translation of the French Madame. It's used to refer to an older lady, a married lady. Uh, the male equivalent is Monsieur. Monsieur literally means my sir. There's an expression in English, my good sir, that's an almost literal translation of Monsieur uh, in French. Great. There are diminutive versions of both of these, but they're also kind of old-fashioned. You may have heard the term Mademoiselle in French. Uh, L is a uh, diminutive suffix that can be applied to grammatically feminine nouns in French. So Mademoiselle is literally my little lady. Uh, that one is kind of falling out of use in modern French because, again, uh, it could come across as condescending or dismissive or even uh, insulting or rude, depending on how you use it. 
Uh, there is a male equivalent of this, but it's even more old-fashioned to the point where I don't think this word has been used in French for a couple of centuries. It's mon d'amoiseau. Uh, o is the uh, grammatically masculine, or one of the grammatically masculine diminutive suffixes that you can apply in French. And mon d'amoiseau is the male equivalent of mademoiselle. It's a uh, little, little gentleman, I guess. Little, little man. But that's extremely, extremely old-fashioned. You won't hear that much, or maybe not ever, in modern French. Uh, the British English equivalent of that would be young master so-and-so, and I don't think... Do we have an equivalent in North American English? I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of one. If you know of one, please write it in the comments down below. I'm drawing a blank here. I, maybe we just don't have one. Where are we? Oh, is this Turner Valley? Turner Valley Post Office, yes, we're in Turner Valley. I've been here before, once. Okay, I'm not stopping here, let's just keep going. Okay, let's move on to German. Uh, there's a few ways to form the diminutive in German. Uh, one of these options, far and away, is more common than all of the other options combined, and that is to use the suffix schen. Yes, most, if not all, of the diminutive forms in German also involve putting a suffix on the end of a noun. Uh, schen is a very common one. You'll see this all over the place. Uh, there's a couple of tricky things to know about using schen, though. Uh, schen will cause the noun that it modifies to undergo an umlaut shift if it contains an eligible vowel. So, for example, das Brot, the bread. You can say uh, das Brötchen, the little bread, literally. But what we're talking about here is a, uh, like a dinner roll, a little individual serving of bread. Great. Uh, der Hund, the dog, becomes das Hündchen, the little dog, or I guess the puppy in English. And die Katze, the cat, becomes das Kätzchen, the little cat or the kitten in English. Uh, you've got... Uh, we have words like ein bisschen in German. Ein bisschen means a little bit. You even have uh, a greeting that you can use with the diminutive. Uh, I don't particularly like this word. I think it's a little too chipper. But you can say something like uh, Hallöchen instead of hallo. Hallöchen means hello, but it's very, very chipper. It's very, uh, like I'm in a very good mood, so I'm going to say a silly word like Hallöchen instead of hello. Notice that Hallo has two eligible vowels that could undergo an umlaut shift, but only the O does the umlaut shift. Why? Because you don't say hallo, you say hallo. The O is stressed, therefore uh, it's the one that takes the umlaut shift. Now, uh, not to ruffle anyone's feathers, but let's talk a little bit about the word girl in German. It is das Mädchen. We notice that it's undergone an umlaut shift and it has Schen at the end of it, so it is the diminutive form of another noun. But what word are we modifying here? Uh, the word that we're modifying is not used very much in modern German, but it is die Magd. Die Magd literally means the maid. Uh, think of like a housemaid or a French maid. So the word for girl in German literally is uh, little maid. And personally, again, please don't send me hate mail for this, but I find that adorable. They refer to girls as little maids. That's so old fashioned. It's something out of the 1800s. But there it is, little maid. I'm not sure how German women feel about referring to girls as little maids, but there it is. It's historical. Uh, another way to say Mädchen in German is das Magdlein. And that brings us to one of the other suffixes that you can use to form the diminutive in German. That is Lein. It's not used as much as Schen, but you'll see it here and there. Uh, for example, das Schifflein. Das Schiff is the ship, like the naval vessel at sea. Uh, Schifflein is a smaller version of that, literally a smaller ship. You've also got words like Schwesterlein or Bruderlein. Uh, that is uh, little sister, little brother. Schwester and Bruder being the base words there. Now, interesting things to note about Schen und Lein is that when you apply it to a noun, it converts the grammatical gender of that noun from whatever it was to grammatically neuter. If you see a word that ends in Schen or Lein, almost always it's going to be a das word. It's going to be neuter. Uh, this makes it kind of handy uh, because you don't have to worry about grammatical gender so much in the diminutive. Uh, for example, der Hund, grammatically masculine, the dog becomes das Hündchen, the, uh, the puppy. And die Katze, grammatically feminine, becomes das Kätzchen, the, uh, the kitten. The other thing to note about using Schen und Lein to modify a noun is that uh, the resulting word does not change forms uh, when you uh, switch from singular to plural. This is kind of confusing. But das Mädchen, the girl, singular, becomes die Mädchen. The girl is plural. The word Mädchen doesn't change at all to show plurality. You have to use uh, other words in the sentence to uh, infer the singular or plurality of it. 
uh, unlike other languages, like let's say English, where our, the diminutive forms of our nouns follow the same rules for pluralization as any other noun. So the piglets, singular, the piglets, plural, throw an S on the end of it and you're good. But for whatever reason in German, uh, they don't do this. At least not with Shen or Lein. Now there are other ways to form the uh, diminutive in uh, German. Let's look at some other suffixes. There's Ling. This is not used as much, but you'll see it here and there. For example, der Zögling, the pupil, or uh, der Jungling, the youth. And notice that Ling makes the word grammatically masculine, not grammatically neuter, it's unlike uh, Shen and Lein. One of my favorites is Liebling. Die Liebe, of course, is love. So if you refer to someone as Liebling, uh, it's the equivalent of, in English of saying uh, like darling. And yes, we have the Ling suffix occasionally in English as well. Darling is the English direct equivalent of uh, of Liebling or sweetheart, I guess. Come on, bud, make your turn. Got places to go. All right, here we go. Uh, there's some other less formal suffixes that can be used in German. Uh, for example, the letter I can be used. This is very similar to what we do with the letter Y in German. You can stick it on the end of somebody's name to form an affectionate nickname for them. For example, Hans can be referred to as Hansi. Fred could be referred to as Freddy. And then there are a few others that are uh, dialect specific. Uh, for example, LI, I believe, is uh, from one of the southern dialects. And you don't see it much, but you will see it occasionally in standard German. For example, the word Müsli for cereal ends with that LI diminutive suffix. Okay, let's talk about titles in German. It's very similar to English and French. Uh, we have the words die Frau und der Herr in German. That's the lady and the gentleman. You can also use these as titles if you're not on a first name basis with someone. For example, uh, Guten Tag, Frau Schmidt. Wie geht es Ihnen heute? Or, Hallo, Herr Schmidt. Wie geht es Ihnen? Notice that if you're not on a first name basis with someone, if you're addressing someone as Frau or Herr, you do not use the informal. You wouldn't say Wie geht es dir. That would, be, that would come across as rude or maybe presumptuous. You use the formal form if you're addressing someone by a title like that. Wie geht es Ihnen is correct. Uh, there are diminutive forms of both of these titles, and they both use Lein. Uh, you may have heard the word Fräulein in German. This literally means little lady. Uh, but again, this is similar to French, maybe not linguistically, but culturally, in that uh, this word Fräulein is being uh, phased out of the language a little bit. Uh, it can come across as condescending or dismissive or even rude, depending on how you use it. And I've been told by at least one German woman that you shouldn't refer to someone as Fräulein if you don't know them very well. Uh, there is a masculine equivalent of this, and that is Menlein, literally little man. Uh, this, I believe, is equivalent to the French Mont d'Amoiseau in that it's very old-fashioned and isn't used much in modern German, maybe not at all. Um, but you will see it in old uh, German uh, fairy tales. For example, in English, we might write about goblins or uh, dwarves, little, little creatures. In German, these are often referred to as Menlein. And I believe, I think, I wasn't able to confirm this 100% before I set out this morning, but I did find at least one example of a politician's speech where he referred to his opponent as an erbärmliche Männlein, which I believe means a pathetic man-child or a pathetic boy. Uh, so I believe that the word Männlein can be used as an insult in German. Uh, similar, there's an insult in English that involves the suffix let. I've seen this on the internet occasionally, people calling each other manlet, literally a little man. Uh, it's insulting to someone's uh, physical stature or lack thereof. If they're not very tall or if they're not very muscular, you can refer to someone as a manlet. It's very rude, uh, it's not very nice. And I believe, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think the word menlein in German can be used in the same way. Now, one final note about uh, Shen is that I believe you can do this on the fly. You can take almost any noun in German and stick Shen on the end of it as long as you remember to do that umlaut shift and remember that the resulting word will be grammatically neuter, so it's a das word. Uh, you can do this with almost any noun. Uh, similar to the prefix mini in English, you can stick mini in front of almost anything. For example, motorcycle. If I just said, uh, I'm going to buy a mini motorcycle, that might not be a formal word in English, but you, you can picture that in your head, right? You can see what that might look like. A mini motorcycle literally would just be a smaller version of a motorcycle. Great. I think something very similar happens with Shen in German. 
is that you can stick it on the end of pretty much any noun, even if it's not a formally correct German word, I'm willing to bet any native German speaker would know what you meant. For example, uh, Motorrad is motorcycle. Could you say in German, I haven't looked this up, I don't know if this is legit, but could you say something like das Motorradchen in German? Is that a word? Probably. I think any native German speaker would know what you meant. Or pick any random noun like das Bett, the bed. Could you say das Bettchen in German to say like a little bed? Probably. I think, again, any native German speaker would know what you meant. So this is kind of handy to know. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this little mini episode. Ha ha ha. There you go. I brought it full circle all the way back to English. Uh, just a quick episode to cover diminutives in English and German. And a little bit of French just for fun. That's all for today. We will see you next time on Lernen und Fahren.